One, two, three, four. Chop, chop, chop. It's cure of the what now? Gather the ingredients. Cure of the what now? Not much time to prep before it's time to start the show. Oh. Guests are arriving. Cure of the what now? Everybody's smiling. Cure of the what now? A tasty party starting now. It's time to go. Woo. Woo. Served hot and fresh. Eat a docky moss. Hello, fellow intrepid note hunters, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of... Ping Pong Cure of the What Now? The one show where we know the best way to see magical creatures is to have some other magical creature spit in your eyeballs. <laughs> Quick, Pete, spit in my eye. I need to see the unicorns. Okay. <laughs> Pete's not magic. He's just a dinosaur. He's a talking dinosaur head. <laughs> okay, yeah. That... What is the difference between magic and paranormal? Depends on who you ask. I'm asking you. Okay, so I would say that there's no difference. Oh. Magic and paranormal are the same thing, but paranormal is what you call it when you want to be taken seriously and you believe that quantum theory proves that ghosts could actually be real, even though that's, I don't think that's what the science says. See, to me, magic is like a force. It's just a force we don't understand. So like if we didn't know anything about electricity, but we knew we could touch a button and make stuff go so that the light turned on, Mm. we would call that magic. But paranormal is unexplained events that Mm -hmm. have to do with like spirituality. So ghosts. Yeah. Okay. Ghosts. Sure. But what if, so I think paranormal is when you don't just have one average person. You have two, you have a paranormals and somehow when they work together by their powers combined, (laughs) it creates a paranormal. For me, it's when the penis goes in. Oh my God. (laughs) You didn't introduce yourself. I'm your host, Kat, and I am absolutely not your friend. I'm not. We're not friends. I think that you might be, though. I'm not! (laughs) Uh, I'm your co-host, Joel, and also, I'm not really intimidated about the bad guy because I was sleeping while he gave his evil monologue. That sounds like you. What? (laughs) (laughs) This week, it is my turn to do the discussion question, but first, do you have any news or announcements for me? Absolutely. So... If you are listening to this episode as it comes out, rather than, you know, a month in the future or something like that, on April 17th, 2022, we will be hosting a panel at SakuraCon, or SakuraCon, uh, in Seattle, Washington, and it's going to be about Precure. So if you're listening to this and you are available in the area, we'd, we'd love to see you and hang out. Absolutely. And the name of our panel, if you want to look us up in the guidebook and make sure we're not just making this up, is Let's Precure, Building Our Magical World. Absolutely. Now, we've done a couple of panels in the past, and uh, I have brought my computer and the recording equipment, and we've gone from there and we've, we've posted it online. So hopefully that will be the case again, but... Uh, we're newbies at this relatively, so if it doesn't go up, then oops, sorry. Yeah. But I'm, I'm planning on trying to record it and, and putting it up. Generally speaking, we have a lot of fun at these events. We get to talk about things that we like. We encourage audience participation. This panel is going to be particularly fun because we're going to start by saying, you know, what makes Precure Precure? Why is it good? And then... The audience and us, we will come up with a show like we've been doing for our discussion questions, but longer. I bet we can fill an hour. Note to self, when Catherine asks what makes Precure Precure, do not use the Parks and Rec quote that she used earlier in this episode. (laughs) For me, it's when the penis goes in, because that is inappropriate as an answer to that question. I do think I marked our uh, panel as PG-13, so I think you can say penis once. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You get a single penis. Oh my goodness. Gracious. All right, this is getting weird. Do we want to move to the discussion question or do we have more news? I think that's it. What about the hacking at Toei? Oh, yes. So when they uh, put out their announcement about the hacking, they said that it was going to be probably another three weeks before they brought back their regular schedule sometime mid April. Well, it turns out that they still aren't quite ready to. Um, to announce that they're coming back just yet. So I believe that they said that this weekend, the 8th? What what day is that? The 9th, they won't be showing a new episode of Delicious Party. So it looks like next week will be another sweet extravaganza. Yes, and then the show might come back 
the following week, but it might not. The only thing they've promised is that they would give an update. Yes, so they'll give an update next week, and when we record the next episode, if news has come out, we will let you know. Totes my goats. Now, let's talk about a pre-cure season. Yes. I would like you to pitch me a pre-cure season based on holidays. So, I think that the girls would have to be pretty excited about parties and maybe different cultures. Because, like, if you think about it realistically, I don't know how evenly spaced the actual, like, canon is. Like, episode 12 of Tropical Rouge and episode 13, were they two days apart in-universe, or were they six months apart in-universe? Probably not six months. It's, that's too much time. But if you assume that the episodes air in relatively realistic time, so each episode takes place on a different week... There's not that many holidays that are big and celebratory. So it seems like they would have to either travel around to different places that have, like, local... I guess those wouldn't be holidays. Those would be more like festivals. Well, so Precure usually airs from mid-February to right Right. before the next season comes out to mid-February. So that's a whole year's worth of holidays. They do the Christmas episode usually around when Christmas is. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying that, like, in terms of major holidays that you could do, like, an episode about that would be interesting, I don't think that you have 40 unique holidays. So I think that by if you had it focus on different cultures or different people from different regions or something like that, you would be able to say, like, this week we're talking about this special holiday from... Germany or whatever, and then next week we'll talk about a special holiday that comes from South Africa or something like that. Okay, I like that. I think I would make one of the core themes of this season embracing our differences. Okay. There would be a series of holiday worlds a la Nightmare Before Christmas, and each of the girls would get a fairy that comes from that world. Oh, okay. And it would be about, you know, we're all celebrating different things, but we're all celebrating. Mm, okay, and yeah. so it's it's about bringing people together. You could have one who's obsessed with love and she's like the cure of White Day and Valentine's Day. Okay. Uh, would I think you'd have to have a Christmas one. That would probably be your pink. Probably, maybe? What's the Japanese holiday where they make wishes uh, on the tree? Is that Tachibana Festival, I think? I think so. We just watched an episode of Star Twinkle about it, but I I would like one of the cures to be that holiday. I think that'd be cool. Absolutely. That could be the mid-season cure um, because it takes, you know, if the season starts in February, I believe Tachibana is like the 7th of July. I think it's 7-7 is the date that they celebrate it. And so that would give them enough time to kind of introduce her. Okay. I think that would be great. Cool. I like it. Does the episode that airs on a particular holiday, give that character special focus. Yes. Okay, absolutely. So you you know it's coming up. You know that this is going to be the Christmas girl's big Christmas event. And you know that the Halloween girl, Kier Spooky, uh, gets a special, you know, Halloween episode. You are such a mind reader. I was going to say Kier Spooky for Halloween. Kier Jolly or Kier Holly for Christmas? <laughs> Maybe it's twins. <laughs> Twin gears. I think I like Holly bit. Mm. I like Holly better, but I think Jolly would be the more likely if they actually did that. Okay, or Cure Jingle. (laughs) (laughs) She has eight fairies. She has Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen, um, someone, something, something, and another one. (laughs) (laughs) I can tell you celebrate the religious holidays, the high holy days. Oh, I don't know all, you know, Dasher and Prancer and Donner and Vixen. Blitzen. Cupid and... Comet and Donner and Blitzen. Nope, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You're doing your best. Maybe hers, her fairy would be Rudolph inspired though. Oh yeah, yeah, With like a red nose or something. Mm. Absolutely. I think that if you were focusing on parties and holidays and togetherness and the things that are the same about us, then the bad guys would be like creepy hyper individualists. Mm. Mm, and okay. the way that they would, you know, make the monsters of the week, they would turn the hearts of man, is they'd, they'd convince people, like, you're better than them. You don't need them. Mm, selfishness kind of a thing. What if one of the bad guys was just Ebenezer Scrooge? Like, he wants all of the money, and he's mean to other people, and he attacks you with ghosts that can make you see the sad past or something like that. Okay, okay. Would you want Ebenezer Scrooge or the Grinch? Oh, that's an excellent point. Gunch Punch. <laughs> I like the Grinch or the Gunch, I suppose, 
because that would mean that they could have wacky cartoon abilities, like he could have like a stretchy body or something. I'm sorry. The Gunch's pro- preferred pronouns are Gunch and Gunch self. <laughs> so <laughs> Gunch could be running around doing all sorts of Gunchy things. <laughs> what a great intro discussion i wanted to call this a mic test our mic test was weird today by the way i don't know where joel puts those up or if he saves them for like the end of the season every mega post so what what i did uh for season one because i did i wasn't i didn't know what my plan was i put them all up on youtube exclusively they are not on uh the podcatcher of choice uh and i did episode 10 episodes at a time in chunks so that's what I'll be doing this season. So once we get to episode 10 of Badoom, Boom, Boom, Kill Rope the What Now, uh, it will go up on YouTube. So awesome. Absolutely. Joel, can you give me a hardcore freestyle rap about this week's episodes of Sweet? Uh, no, I'm not good at delivering off the top of my head. Uh, uh, raps. Yo, this is a story all about how the siren's life got turned upside down. This is just the opening of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It's hard. Rapping is hard, <laughs> and sometimes music is not in our wheelhouse. It's a practice skill, and I'm not great at improv for uh, in that in that area. So we watched four episodes of Sweet. Episodes 18, 19, 20, and 21. And just like last week, I think they happen to divide quite nicely into two sets of two episodes. Episode 18, the girls are going on a note-catching spree. Hummy's like, oh my god, there's so many notes in the air. Who knows why? I think the mid-season is coming up. We gotta get out there. We gotta catch all of the notes. And they go out and they catch all of the notes. I, th- there's really not much else to say. Uh, the bad guys create... Is this the episode where they have, like, 40 notes at a time? No, it isn't. That's next episode. The bad guys create some notes, and in all the chaos, Kier Mew shows up, saves the day by getting all of the bottles, and then just... Pops them open. That's them... also the next episode, I think. No, that's this one. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. Easy to get confused. Uh, You're right. You're right. It's this okay. episode. So, Kier Muse lets all of the notes go, and everyone's like, what the heck? And she goes, I never said that I was your ally. I think I specifically said that I'm no one's ally. Yeah, she takes the notes from the bad guys, but she doesn't give them to Hummy. She releases them, because yes. she's terrible. I, I, apparently so, according to the information. And then in episode 19, Siren's like, wait, I just bought the first 18 episodes of Sweet Precure on the Blu-ray. I watched them, and I have it. I figured out wh- how the girls transform. They have to be able to harmonize they can't harmonize if in their separate rooms. Also, like I pointed out in episode two, a gun would go a long way to solving this problem, Siren. So she creates a door negatone, and the door negatone sucks the Hibiki and Kanade and puts them into a world of pink and a world of green, because as you know, pink and green cannot mix together unless you're playing Splatoon. And because the girls can't transform together, the day is, is it's over, it's ruined, except they figure out how to harmonize anyways, because that's the power of friendship, baby. They escape and save the day. And that has been your succinct summary! For the first two episodes. For the, for episodes 18 and 19, yes. Did you like these episodes? Yes. Episode 18 was one of the cutest episodes around. It was Hibiki and Kanade trying to catch notes that they couldn't see and just acting like dorks. And, it, 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 you know, the, the thesis of this season is these two curls don't get along, but by the end of the season, they will get along. Oh, I thought the thesis of this season was these two girls gay. <laughs> I mean, possibly, but uh, this episode just had a lot of, it had like cute moments, I guess. It didn't feel like it progressed the plot other than Muse revealing that she apparently has some agenda of some sort, but I, I did, I did really like it. Absolutely. I thought it was a lot of fun. Hibiki has a line that's a little odd where she watches Kanade try to catch a note and miss and she goes... You have nimble fingers, but watch these. And she flicks her hand out and catches a note between two fingers. Like a ninja, kind of, almost. It was awesome, but also, Hibiki, what? Yeah. What? You have nimble fingers is a weird thing to say to your bro. Now, technically, we are watching fan subs because, as far as I know, they have not released this show uh, on Blu-rays that you can buy and, and get the official subtitles. So maybe they changed it a little bit maybe they tweaked it maybe toei would would select different words but yeah that was a strange 
phrase that you and I were like, that's kind of weird. And then James, that one welder guy, also, when he watched the episode separately, was like, that was kind of weird. Mm -hmm. It was really weird. I made a joke in our intro about a magical creature has to spit in your eyes so you can see the other magical creatures. At first, Hummy's like, there's notes everywhere. And I'll talk about my problem with that in a second. But Hummy's like, there's notes everywhere. You girls got to help me catch them. And the girls are like, we can't see them. Where are they? And after 20 minutes of this, Hummy goes, it would probably help if you could see them, huh? And Hummy does her little lucky thing. And now all of a sudden the girls can see. I said the spit thing because that was a reference to the Spiderwick Chronicles, which was one of my favorite fairy-based series as a kid. Ah, uh, yes, I definitely caught that reference. It I was didn't catch that reference. it was dark fantasy, and there were two ways you could see fairies. One was by looking through a stone with a hole in the middle, and one was by being licked in the eyeball by one of these fairy creatures. Why would they do that? Because their spit is magic. I but what? What? <laughs> okay, we don't have time to I said unpack it was dark this. fantasy. <laughs> that doesn't mean licking eyeballs. Jeez. What can you think of that's more horrifying than getting your eyeballs licked? I guess that's true. The, one of the problems I had with this episode was at the very beginning, Mephisto and Aphrodite both say, hmm, maybe we should go down there. And then it cuts to Hummy, and Hummy's like, there are notes everywhere, the notes are going crazy. And I thought, maybe... Aphrodite had come on down from Magic Town and they were like flocking to her. But no, it had nothing to do with that. My follow up theory is that um, because we heard Otakichi playing his organ, it was finally like mostly close fixed. Yep. And he was playing the melody of happiness. Hummy recognizes it. And so I think the notes were flocking to that. Mm. But. Mephisto and Aphrodite don't show up at all. So that throwaway line at the beginning was pointless. They literally at the end of the episode are like putting on their hat and their coat to go outside. And they're like, all right, we're going to, to the human world to cause chaos and or heal them of all of their wound, you know, depending on perspective. Uh, maybe we'll do it tomorrow. And then they put their hat back up on the rack. They take off their coat. They hang it up. And then they just sit down. And they just have like a beer in front of the TV. You know, it's it's hard work being an evil warrior type villain. Uh, who wants to take over the world, but just can't be asked to do it. What's Aphrodite's excuse? She's Princess Celestia. Can't do anything. Maybe, so in in the Inhumans comic books, uh, Black Bolt has a voice so powerful that if he speaks, it will destroy, like, everything in front of him. So he he's, ba he's effectively mute. He can talk, but he chooses not to because too much destruction. What if Cure Aphrodite is so powerful and or so attractive that she has an effect on the world around her. So she's she's remaining outside of the affairs of the human world to protect them oh. from the effects. Okay, I'm, I can be on board with that. What about episode 19? Did anything in particular stand out to you? Did you feel like we got any new information? At the end of... Oh, no, I think it was episode 17. At some point last episode of the podcast, I said that if Hibiki and Kanade fall for Siren's stupid uh, shape-shifting now that they've realized that she has that... Um, that Necklace. Uh, yeah, the, the pendant or whatever, the charm, that gives away that she's someone in disguise, I would be very upset. So episode 19 actually starts, I kind of skipped it for the succinctness of the summary, but Hummy gets trapped inside of a soap bubble, and Siren pretends to be Hummy. And... There's a moment where I'm like, please, girls, don't fall for this. But Kanade figures it out. And she's like, we have to go talk for a second. And just like yanks Hibiki off screen. And it's just like, that siren in disguise. What are we going to do? And this actually kind of sets up the conflict between them. Because Hibiki wants to basically just like go and beat up Siren. But Kanade wants to find out where Hami is. Uh, and this causes a little bit of conflict between them. But there's just some good interactions with the evil Hami who is like, has an, a malicious aura g glowing about her. I love evil Hummy. Also, I love that knowing that she was Siren didn't stop them from getting captured. Yes, And there's absolutely. a moment of, this is your fault. We went with your stupid plan, Kanade. No, Hibiki, this is your fault because we rushed into a situation sort of, but not really. Absolutely. There was also a really good scene while the girls are muttering to each other and watching Siren as Hummy, where she sp Siren spots a t soccer ball 
And she starts like kicking it and rolling around with it and just being a cat. Yeah. Like I get the impression she doesn't get to just enjoy herself a lot of the time. So like maybe one of the reasons she's so mean to Hummy about being an airhead is that she wishes she could be a bit of an airhead. Mm, She's sort of like single mother who has to take care of her three idiot children, baritone, bass, or bass drum, who knows, one of those two, and falsetto. Are you going to keep making that joke every time? What joke? The bass drum. No one can confirm or deny his how is, his name is... We could listen to it. I could, but how do I know that the audio isn't worked? There's there's, there's no one on earth who could be an authority Here's as the deal. to the pronunciation of bass the deal. or bass Look, drum. I'm going to give you one more, okay? One more, what? one more, what's his name, nobody knows, nobody can tell. <laughs> and yeah. then, for every subsequent utterance... I am going to say something extremely cursed on Mike. (laughs) And I know you're tempted to say, well, I'll just edit it out. But I will say things that are cursed enough that it will leave obvious holes in the audio. And everyone will have to wonder, what did she say? And if you want to know, sign up for our Patreon. (laughs) (laughs) Good sale there. Good upsell. So anything else about these episodes that stuck out to you? What is Muse's deal? What does she want? Because obviously she doesn't want the bad guys to win, but she doesn't want the Precure to win either. So is she just running around, hanging out? I don't know. So I think I mentioned earlier that I thought that maybe Kier Muse wanted them to become stronger on their own. And so maybe they wouldn't be able to handle the song of harmony or happiness or whatever it's called if they listen to it now. But that doesn't really make sense to me. The only other thing is that she released the notes after successfully capturing or rescuing them. And so maybe the melody of happiness is also bad for the notes. Maybe she's on a third side where she's like neither song of happiness, song of sorrow, just let the notes chill. But we don't know anything about the notes. So I just I I don't know. How many episodes do you think that mystery is going to last? Do you think she's going to give her backstory in like a single 12 minute clip and then she's going to transform and save the day? Or do you think it's going to be like a multi-part arc type thing? I think we will get probably three or four episodes of Siren adjusting to the changes that we will describe in a moment. And then we will get some wrap up on the Cure Muse stuff. Mm, okay. Maybe it'll happen a little bit concurrently, but I think the next couple episodes are going to be siren focused. Okay. I also want to shout out the disgusting mouth sounds in episode 19. Yeah. I feel very strongly that there's no reason to ever have audio of characters eating. Yeah. You can just show me them eating. I believe you. I don't need to be immersed in the yeah. experience. I don't even like to listen to real people eat. I have to go eat in a separate room sometimes. There's actually a, a word for that I actually found out recently for some people who get like irrationally angry. I don't know if you're at maximum levels compared to some people, but definitely it's something that you and I both dislike and like why would um, anything need to include it? And there's no need to have vomit on screen either. That's something that a lot of people... um, My favorite version of that is still My Heroes, where it's just rainbows for some reason. It's Mm. off screen, but also you see rainbows. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think that does it for 18 and 19. Now we get to move on to the juicy episode 20 and 21. Is there a reason you use that particular adjective? Because it's exciting. The exciting episode in Better. 20 and 21? The heart pounding episode, Doki Doki No Episode? Oh, yeah. Or would it I be episode that... No Doki Doki? You're the expert here. I, do... I am not the expert. No, that's your chance to be confidently wrong. Be like Erica Karumi. <laughs> <laughs> that only makes sense if people listen to the mic test. It won't be available for like another three weeks. <laughs> okay. Sweet episodes 20 and 21. Uh, Siren shows up and is all like, Hummy, I'm definitely a good guy now. And Hummy goes, okay, Siren, you're definitely a good guy now. I'm going to help you out. And Siren goes, hey, do you have any of those notes that I might be able to steal? I mean, use to complete the Harmony Happiness song. And Hummy's like, oh, no, the notes aren't here. But maybe tomorrow we can we can meet up and I'll give you the notes. And Siren goes, excellent, good, perfect. <laughs> and then Hummy shows up and and. Siren gets attacked by the the minor trio, and they turn this jar of notes into this powerful monster, 
and the only way that the cures are able to defeat it is by Siren using her ability to make the notes turn on each other, which causes the monster to temporarily be distracted, and then they're able to, like, blow it up, which is super cool. But then, at the end of the episode, when the not-evil Siren gets the notes, she goes, actually, I am evil, and that's the end of episode 20. She pushes Hummy, and it's the most dramatic slow-motion fall I've ever seen in a pre-cure show. And the slow fall, sorry, this isn't part of the succinct summary, but the slow motion fall is both one of the most heartbreaking moments in all of Precure that I've seen so far, because Hami is just a pure being and, 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 you know, this is the hand of darkness metaphorically, like, casting her out. But also it's contrasted with Hami going, no! <laughs> really silly voice and i can't get over that sound it plays on my head and on repeat i might insert it into this episode right now do you have a succinct summary of episode 21 for yes me? so siren is like i am definitely evil yes yes i am evil and honey goes i don't think that she's evil and they talk to queen aphrodite and uh, aphrodite is like hmm if you don't think that she's evil maybe she's not evil and then hibiki and kanade have a funny moment where they meet the queen they're like oh my gosh this is the queen and then mephista goes hey hummy i definitely think you're evil and then both bass and bass drum uh, together with falsetto and uh uh baritone are all like we think that you're a good person and then lo and behold siren betrays Mephisto and tries to send all of the notes to Hummy in order to free Hummy from, like, the trap that she was in. And then Mephisto's like, hey, I'm just gonna beat the crap out of Hummy. Not beat the crap out of, but I'm gonna send those, like, earplugs of malice after her. And Siren gets so upset that she's like, don't hurt Hummy, and she transforms into a brand new cure, who then promptly leaves and doesn't do anything. She looks like a cure, but she doesn't get a cure name. We don't see a henshin sequence, and she doesn't have any henshin objects. She doesn't have a fairy tone or a, what do they call their sticks in this season? Uh, Miraculous Ladybug. I don't know. Okay, they call it Miraculous. Oh, Beltier. The Fantastic yes, and Wonderful Beltier? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Miraculous. The Fantastic and Miraculous Beltiers. She doesn't have any of that. So I don't know if she counts as a real precure or if she is just... Somebody whose love for a friend has transformed her. Yeah, but she's got the dress, is the thing. So I don't... I would... Well, and what about Cure Muse? I don't know. I, I, I legitimately didn't think that there were any seasons that introduced multiple mid-season cures. And I mean, arguably, Cure Muse is or isn't. But I just... I didn't expect... I expected Siren to be the secret cure... And when it turned out that Muse wasn't her, I had no idea how that was going to resolve. But it feels like, based off of the dress, she's going to be added to the team next episode. I just think that due to pacing, they couldn't introduce, like, what her name is or what her power is. And maybe she's still conflicted. Maybe she thinks she wants to be evil, but she doesn't. I don't don't know. Yeah, could be. There is a good scene between her and Cure Muse while the girls are still fighting the Negatone. Which is the clock tower, by the way. It's so cool. Supremely cool. But Cure Muse says, aren't you going to go help? And Siren says, I don't give a crud about anybody. I just wanted to help Hummy. Mm. And so the will she join the team, won't she join the team is interesting. It's also interesting because as we've said before, we were under the impression that your heart had to resonate with that of another person to become a precure. Oh, and true. we've got Cure Muse, who doesn't resonate with anyone, and Siren, who hasn't resonated with anyone, but they both are in alignment that they don't want to help the girls. Oh, okay. So there's like two teams going on. It's like a Pat Ranger versus Lupin Ranger, whatever that <laughs> season was called. What if Hummy and Siren resonated and next episode we'll get Cure Hummy? I would love that. <laughs> Unironically, I would love that. She would be almost as perfect as Peckerin at that point. Mm-hmm. Your favorite fairy. Yeah, my, my favorite fairy who definitely should never be turned into a human for any reason whatsoever. Or meatballs. You can't turn Peckerin into meatballs. I don't think she would be very tasty or he, whatever gender Peckerin was. Peckerin's a girl. Okay. I think all the main fairies are girls. Maybe. Tart's not a girl, but Chiffon is a girl. Anyway, do you like these episodes? Uh, okay, so I really like these episodes... A bit. Like I said, uh, the, the, the siren, like, betraying Hummy, even though we knew it was going to happen, that, that did hurt my heart, even though you clearly knew it was coming. I loved the fact that the clock tower became the negatone. Of course it did. 
And I love the beard dwarves. Yes, we need to talk about the beard dwarves. Now, Why do we keep saying beard dwarves? Why not just say dwarves? Because they're formed from Mephisto's beard hair. Oh. Yes. Yes, they are. Okay, yes. so you're going to have to go into more depth here. <laughs> See, I was going to say, okay, so if you somehow didn't watch episode 21 of Sweet Break here, it starts with Mephisto basically being like, great, my evil plan has come to fruition. We need some people to help out with the preparations. We're going to throw a raging party, and these are the these are the caterers or something like that. So he plucks out a little clump of beard hair, and he blows on it, and the individual hairs turn into little dwarf guys. They're not like mythical dwarves from like Lord of the Rings. They they seem to be more like human adult size. They're smaller than the minor trio and Siren, but they're not tiny, tiny. They're yeah. like, but they're just dudes. They're, they're just, just little dudes. dudes. Uh-huh. And uh, they just kind of help set up the preparations. I'm not clear. One of them. Oh, sorry. I'm not clear what exactly they did, except for I think that you were going to point out there was a scene with them. I was going to say one of them uh, was conducting the orchestra for Siren's mm, accompaniment. Okay. They built the stage. and I didn't think that you needed accompaniment for the Song of Sorrow, but I guess that's an important part. You know? Siren is a diva. That's oh. why she needed a giant stage. Mm. <laughs> Mephisto knows his audience. I see. Here's something interesting. In episode 20, Siren goes to Mephisto and says, I've got a plan. It's a super sneaky plan. I need you to use those headphones the evil things on me she, she had a specific word for them and i wish i'd written it down mm. but she asks him to use the things that had turned her evil a couple episodes ago on her again even though she's currently feeling evil because she needs extra evil to do what she wants to One do evil side of extra evil on the side please exactly so i think she knew that some sort of hummy and i are actually friends is coming and this was her attempting to stave it off but she just she couldn't mm. but he uses these things on her and while he does i noticed mephisto has those in his ears mm. mm -hmm. and we thought for a second we were like oh maybe the show has never showed us his ears before maybe they're always covered by his hair and this was the first time we would have seen it and we're using them on siren again to remind us that they exist so we can look at him and go hey wait a second joel did go back to episode one and they can be faintly seen in a scene in episode one however i still do think this was a purposeful reminder that they exist yes. and it's not a prominent thing the camera doesn't zoom in on them or anything like that he doesn't say oh yes your ears will match mine but you can see it in that scene mm -hmm. and as a reminder the way these work is they go in your ears and they make a sound and when they fall out you're evil yeah and you don't believe in friendship so is mephisto actually a good guy <sighs> i mean Listen, I've been shipping Mephisto and Aphrodite this entire time. I have a sizzling hot fan fiction. I don't, but in the works right now. Um, but like Mephisto, to me, I always called him Wario because he seems so incompetent as a villain. And the thing about incompetent villains is there's almost always a more competent one behind them, you know? So I think that Mephisto is being controlled. I'm curious as to who and why and when we're going to find out. Is Siren going to reveal some secret in the next, you know, two or three episodes? Or is it going to be, like, episode 46 out of 48 when they finally, like, defeat him and he explodes and then the dragon of despair or whatever comes out of the pit? Dragon of despair, that would be awesome. I guess it would be, like, the dragon of discordance for, you know, a musical-themed season. Mm -hmm. So they kind of look like shells. So... There's that, but they also kind of look like seeds or nuts, and what do we know that eats those? Birds. He's got bird skull business on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And you pointed out that the negatones look like uh, skull birds as the well. The negatones look like bird skeletons. Aphrodite's got a good bird, mm -hmm. so I think the big bad is some giant evil bird. And then Siren gets to eat them. Oh my god, that's why the fairies are cats. We've blown this thing wide open. Episode over, we can all go home. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, should the evil big bad, who might be controlling Mephisto, who I'm pretty sure is controlling Mephisto, should they be played by John Cena in the live-action adaptation? I'm going to say yes. Because 
We haven't seen them once this whole time. <laughs> they're actually standing right behind Mephisto. I don't I don't know how anyone has missed the clues, but they're just that good at blending into the background. Oh my gosh. Uh, shout out to John Cena. I don't know if I've said this on the pod before, but he has filled more Make-A-Wish wishes than any other person in Make-A-Wish Foundation history. And I think that's really neat. He's some kind of like mortal genie man, you know? <laughs> he gained the powers through wrestling and now he can spread that that well-being to others. Absolutely. Anything else that you want to say or talk about on these two episodes? Yeah, so uh, uh, Siren, when she was was about to have her breakthrough, her little tag, the shape-shifting relic, I guess I'll call it, kind of like exploded. And so what I'm wondering is, A, are we going to get a backstory as to when she got that collar? Because I think we saw it in all the flashbacks with her. But secondly, is she now stuck in human form? Because I would think that without it, she would be stuck in her original form, which would be cat form. But at the end of the episode, she was still in in the human form that she incidentally used in the very first episode when I went back and rewatched that recently. Uh, And so, yeah, maybe she's not a cat anymore. So previous Precure seasons or other Precure seasons in the series, I guess, because it wouldn't be previous at this point. But... Other series have established that fairies can become humans when they are strong enough. So I think this transformation unlocked a whole new level of strength that forced her into human mode. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll find out that the collar was a gift from Hummy and it was like holding all her love for Hummy this whole time. And that's Mm. why it exploded because her love for Hummy was just overflowing. (laughs) Queen Aphrodite found a henchin item, and she went, how interesting. But for some reason, she didn't want the world to know. There was, like, the the evil puppet master who controls Mephisto, John Cena, would, would notice if she had a henchin item. So she painted it to look like a pendant, and then she put on a disguise and sold it to Siren. And that's why it exploded, was because the true nature of the transformation item awakened. It's all a long con. It's all there, right there in the subtext. Absolutely. (laughs) The (laughs) sub-subtext. One other thing that I want to discuss, we don't get a cure name for Siren. We mentioned earlier, that's why I'm not sure does she even count as a cure yet, or do you count as a cure once you've accepted responsibility for the mantle and taken on a cure identity, Mm. which she hasn't done. With a capital I, of course. What would your speculation as to her cure name be? We have Rhythm and Melody. Uh, And Muse. Muse. Maybe she could be, is there a, is there a devil of music? (laughs) You know, is there something on the other side of that? Um, Her cure name is Cure Cats, the musical 2019. Show us the butthole cut, (laughs) Siren. (laughs) I'm Whoa, sorry, that careful. was that that's, was that's extremely cursed. <laughs> I didn't even do the bass drum, bass drum thing. It wasn't as cursed as what would happen if you did that. Oh, okay. I wonder, like, you could go so many interesting ways with music. You could go, like, Cure Echo would be oh. a great one. You could do Cure Blues. I do actually believe that there is a Cure Echo. I think that's the movie only Cure who shows up in two movies back to back. Maybe. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I think so. I'm oh, sure. Okay, I'm going to have to look into that later. Yeah. As a note, we only watch movies for the seasons that we're currently watching, which, by the way, I think the sweet movie probably, they're sweet, the, the, the pre, the, the, geez, you know what I'm talking about, the all-stars, the DX movie, uh, we could probably watch that already. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, Echo is a pretty good one. Uh Cure, you said Cure Blues. I like Cure Rock. <laughs> cure Rock and Cure Muse's real name is Cure Roll. Uh, cure Disco. Okay. Cure Symbol. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. They already have Arpeggio in a uh, attack name. Otherwise, I'd suggest Cure Arpeggio. Mm. Cure Cadence. Yeah. I don't know why she couldn't be Cure Siren. Like, I know that they usually only have the characters be Cure whatever they are. Uh, if they're like a movie only, like there, there's Cure. I mean, Cure Peckerin is Cure Peckerin. That's true. So yeah, I, I guess she's not a fairy, but she is a cat from the fairy world. I'm going to go with Cure Siren. That's my official uh, okay. guess. Okay, that's your official guess. My official guess is Cure 
blues because I think it would be really funny. A, you've got rhythm and blues. Okay. B, muse and blues rhyme. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to go with. Are we ready to move on to tweets in a bottle? Yes. Sweet sound bites. bites. Yeah, sweet sound bites. There we go. I want to say, James and I, we are on the same wavelength. That one welder guy saw Siren transform and went, she's purple! (laughs) Exactly the same response. She has the best design of any cure this season. She's purple. Right. Okay, yeah. I I respect your opinion. I really like the aesthetic of like the pure white cure and the blonde hair, but maybe that's being influenced by like uh uh angelic uh uh works of art, like literal literal depictions of of of, you know, Christian Christian angels. Could be. Could be. I do like the white, but just look at Siren's hair pretty good it looks like she'll be able to like wrap it around people like i know that her hair is kind of similar to melodies to hibiki's when she transforms but i just want to see her use it as like a lasso it's still infinitely funny to me that siren's name when she's in human form is ellen yeah i don't know where that (laughs) name comes from maybe siren erin maybe maybe it has to do with the japanese actually because they don't really do l's they just have the r sounds and then i guess they pronounce it more softly when they want to do it so i think that maybe siren and erin uh sound very similar okay could be it's just it's one of those things like there's a pre there's a character in one season named karen that's yes. also funny to me <laughs> it, it absolutely is of course of course we had a theory briefly that what if Cure Muse was actually a cat? And I can't remember if it was related to the cats of Majorland or if it was just like us joking around and like having a funny moment. But James pointed out that if Muse was a cat, she would definitely be the type to just knock things off of shelves. That's why she let the notes go. It's not because she made a conscious choice. She just kind of like tipped it over and it shattered and they flew into the wind. Hibiki looks at Cure Muse and goes, oh, who's a pretty girl? And Cure Muse pukes on her couch. <laughs> Kicks her in the shin and runs away hissing. (laughs) I did that a lot to people in middle school. Hmm. (laughs) Interesting. Uh, James also uh, mentioned more Gramp stuff, I guess. Now, I forgot to mention this, but Otakichi has, in past episodes, seemed to have some knowledge as to what's going on. He was the one who told them what Muse means. He seemed to know that something was wrong when, when Kier Muse showed up in that very first episode. And in this episode, when the the Song of Sorrow is being played, everyone in the town square, except for Hibiki and Kanade, start, like, they fall over and they start crying and stuff. But Otakichi is just standing there, completely unaffected. He's, like, rubbing his ear, and he goes, hmm, the sound is off. Otakichi, what are you? I used to think Leprechaun, but now I'm starting to think that maybe you're Kira Muse or something. I don't know. Have we ever seen him and Cure Muse in the same room at the same time? Yes, in this episode. Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, not in the room. They were both outside. Maybe it's Shadow Clone no Well, and we, I mean, did we see him after the Negatone showed up? Maybe he ducked away when Hibiki and Kanade transformed, and then he came back looking like a young woman wearing a mask with a fairy tone, you know? Okay, okay. Can't prove it didn't happen. Uh... But, you know, he just, he drops all pretense and he seems to, like, tell Hideki and Kanade, he's like, the world's worst concert is about to start. You know too much, old man. Are you actually Aphrodite's dad? Is your daughter Aphrodite? We know you have a grandchild. Who is it? A grandchild. A grandchild. Well, because I thought, I swore in that first episode, um, he said that he had a grandson, but I don't think that's true. I think he says grandchild. Yes, I think that the gender was deliberately ambiguous. Hmm. Hmm. Also, episode 19 from that one welder guy. I can forgive Siren for messing with Kanade. He can forgive Siren for messing with Hibiki. But messing with Hummy? How dare she? Absolutely. Oh, shoot. What do they say? Top something, something, Eurus and I. Unforgivable. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the rest. Oh, yeah. by the way. Oh, we is heard- that me, Eurus and I? Is it something like that? I think so. We heard that in another show. And like I was saying to Joel before, I'm pretty sure that this is the phrase that is consistently translated differently depending on who interprets it. And it kind of defies translation. But the way we saw it was like, 
you're full of shit or something like (laughs) that. Uh, And it was just enjoyable to be like, I recognize that phrase. Absolutely. It goes to show you can't just learn a language from watching anime because you are at the whims of your translator. Hmm. And that has been your (laughs) final thoughts. Outro goes here. Wait, it's time for the worst concert ever. (laughs) macaroni in a pot no (laughs) thank you everyone thank you all for joining us for another delicious plateful of killer of the what now please take a moment to rate and review wherever you get your podcasts from or if you're watching on youtube be sure to leave a comment a like or lick that subscribe bell so you know when the new episodes are going up did you just say lick it well yeah we're we're making delicious foods it's a delicious party Anyway, you can find me on Twitter at Pirate Ghost Host. Please don't lick me. Can you even lick a ghost? I'm on Twitter <laughs> at Cotwin underscore pod. K-O-T-W-N underscore pod. Absolutely. And as always, the Discord link is in the Twitter bio and also in the YouTube description. Come join us for weekly discussions, streams, and all of the pre-cure your heart can handle. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yum. Or no, I'm full.